In this lecture, I want to briefly introduce inventory management approaches that are suitable when we deal with dependent demand items. I will explain exactly what that means in just a moment. Let me start out by reminding you of the big picture. As we explore various inventory management models and approaches, we distinguish between models that assume demand is constant and known and other models that treat demand and lead times as random variables. In this lecture, we will focus on inventory models for known demand. And we will review two groups of models that help us make inventory-related decisions under the assumption that demand is known. Specifically, we will learn about both dependent demand models and independent demand models. For now, let's focus on dependent demand models. First, there is Materials Requirements Planning, or MRP, and then there is Distribution Requirements Planning, or DRP. Let me start out with MRP, Materials Requirements Planning. To understand how MRP works, let's use the example of car tires for newly manufactured cars. Clearly, demand for car tires will be a function of demand for new cars. In other words, demand for assemblies, components, or parts, such as tires, is dependent on demand for end items, such as cars. In fact, if an automobile manufacturer wants to assemble 100 vehicles, they know that they will need 400 tires on hand by the time assembly begins. And looking further upstream, this has implications for when these tires must be shipped and manufactured, and when raw materials for these tires must be sourced. And that is the purpose of materials requirements planning. For a given finished product, the MRP lets us determine when and how many raw materials, components, and parts inventories are needed to make sure the finished product will be ready for the customer. While materials requirements planning focuses on procurement and manufacturing processes, distribution requirements planning, or DRP, focuses on inventory decisions throughout a distribution network. These decisions are typically driven by consumer demand that is observed at the store level. To understand how DRP works, let's look at a clothing store as an example. If we expect to sell, say, 50 dresses in Store X in four weeks from now, we will need to make sure that the distribution center, DC1, will have sufficient inventory to cater to this demand at the store level. Accordingly, we will need to make sure that these items will be available in the manufacturer's central warehouse for shipment to the distribution center ahead of time. So, in DRP, demand at the store level drives inventory requirements at the distribution center level. And this, in turn, determines when and how much product is needed at the central warehouse. So, the purpose of distribution requirements planning is to plan inventory requirements at different levels in a distribution system. It specifically addresses three key questions. First, when will inventory be needed? Second, where will inventory be needed? And third, how much inventory will be needed? You might wonder, well, how exactly do we do all that? That's a great question. I will show you how to implement distribution requirements planning in Excel in a separate video.